welcome to Bike File with me, Wazza. This week, I'll be riding one of these here at Donington Park. Louise will be riding this. And Rod will be out on this. This is it. It's the daddy, the Don, the real deal, the big kahuna, quite simply, the maddest, baddest superbike you can buy today. Welcome one and all to Suzuki's GSXR 1000. With a power punch from that engine that slaps you in the face with all the subtlety of a breeze block nailed to a cricket bat, and a chassis bred from Suzuki's years of racetrack experience, this is an awesome package and not a motorcycle for the faint-hearted. Since its introduction last year, the GSXR has sat atop the 1000cc superbike class and although the competition have closed the gap, it's still the benchmark by which the others are rated because when it comes to it, no production bike yet made can quite give the sheer hit one of these can when you really begin to cut loose. Wrapped between these sleek aluminium frame rails lies a 149 brake horsepower, fire-breathing monster of an engine. It is the class leader because it manages to combine that sky-high power figure with a monster broad pumping spread of torque, which simply means that whenever a straight comes into view, no matter how close the rest of the class will have got, this bike will disappear into the distance. This is an ace card the big Suzuki plays time and time again on the track and road alike as it goes about its way of obliterating anything in its path. Like a neat shot of icy cold tequila, opening up a GSX R1000 will leave you sweating, lightly frazzled and gagging to do it again. From the minute you climb aboard, you know that this bike means business because it pitches you straight forward over the bars, tucks your feet up high underneath your ass, and you're very immediately into a riding position that is the racy side of comfortable. It all means that before you've even left the garage, you'll be thinking about lap times. Pottering about really isn't a realistic option on one of these. And just for good measure, there's a steering damper fitted as standard too. You'll find it tucked away down here and it's the same non-adjustable item as fitted to Suzuki's GSXR 750. But where on the 750 it kind of wrecks the bike's poise and handling below 50 mile an hour, on this you don't really notice it's there so much, which is very nice. On the road this bike is pure, if slightly uncomfortable, excellence. The motor means whatever gear you're in, there's a stacker drive on hand just a twist of the wrist away, while the pinpoint steering means you can take care of any back road you care to mention with supreme accuracy. Talking of wheelies, if you don't like them, don't buy a GSX-R Thou. Because if you get anywhere near enthusiastic with the loud handle there in the lower gears, you're going to find the top yokes and clocks coming up to greet you on a regular basis. Either get used to it or buy something else. It's all part of the GSX-R experience. All you'll know from the rider's seat is that when you turn the wick up, the GSX-R is as stable as you like. So whether you're getting daft down a bumpy stretch or landing a third gear stand up a little crossed up, there's no need to worry about any nasty slappers. And now, over to Louise. In a market they pretty much created, Ducati have seen sales decline in their once all conquering Monster 600. So, in the face of Japanese challengers, Ducati have redesigned the baby monster and given it a bit of a facelift in the shape of this, the new 620 IE. With an extra 35cc, a new frame derived from the S4, upgraded suspension and better brakes, this bike's looking like a really tidy package and basically is a completely new model in the Monster range. The 620 is available in two forms, the standard version like this one or the sportier S model. With the S you get better ground clearance, a bikini fearing and a smart alley swinger. But to be quite honest, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the standard version. Do you know, over the years, Ducati have sold over 100,000 units of these around the world, and sales like that can only be compared to the Vespa scooter of the 50s. Bought out to 620cc, the engine is still an air-cooled 90-degree V-twin with single-cam Desmodronic valves. Now, with a larger airbox and bigger diameter valves, this lump now pumps out a healthy 60 brake horsepower. Torque is up too. With the extra power, Ducati have upgraded the brakes with 320mm discs with Brembo calipers. Good initial bite, but smooth with great feedback through the new, more responsive forks. Riding the bike, you can feel the differences between this and earlier versions. 
The familiar vibrations still make their way through both the bars and the foot pegs, but without being a pain. The exhaust noise is typical of an air-cooled V-twin, and the new exhaust growls with the gorgeous, unmistakably Ducati boom. And as with every Duke, throttle response is spot on, as well as an effortless clutch to sum up the ride. You know, the monster absolutely adores all the twisty, windy roads, and especially this new one sticks to those corners. Who takes them all so curvaceously and so very elegantly? I can't believe how much this new monster has changed. She's a lot more tame than what she used to be. The performance is lively, with the extra horses immediately apparent in comparison to older versions, with smoother power throughout the rev range, feeling the motor pick up at 6,000 revs. Spin it up to nine and a half through the much improved gearbox and you'll be grinning like the proverbial Cheshire cat. I really like all the changes they've made. They're certainly all for the better and the Ducati still looks as beautiful as it always has done. Oh, and one more thing. Thank goodness they've got rid of that spring-loaded side stand. Look at this, filtering through traffic, it's an absolute doddle. You know, these bikes are so easy to ride. My grandma could ride one. <laughs> Performance. Well, let's give it 8 out of 10. This is a completely new bike and at its heart, a revitalised V-twin. Now, this 620 engine, oh, it's just so much fun. And the thing is, it's just as easy for a novice and you can have just as much fun if you're one of the foggies out there. <laughs> Now, as for the comfort factor, ah, let's give it 7 out of 10. It's an interesting position riding the Monster. The bars are well spaced out, but they're not too high and they're not too low, so it's the kind of bike that you can do quite a lot of miles on. Great for commuting to work, great for zipping through town. Ooh, don't you just love it? Build quality at Ducati has come on in leaps and bounds over the last five years, and these bikes are no longer considered unreliable. The old air-cooled V-twin engine has benefited from many years of development and can rival any Japanese motor. So I reckon build quality will give it 9 out of 10. Value for money? It's got to be 9 out of 10. A bike with looks, poise, heritage and passion running right the way through it. And it's got electronic fuel injection, all for 5 grand. I feel a little spoilt really. Street cred, eh? What can I say? Well, it was around eight years ago that Ducati paved the way for street bikes. And since then, all the other manufacturers have had a go, but almost none of them have come up with a design that is as beautiful as this monster. We can only give it 10 out of 10. Oh, it's gorgeous. Ducati Monster, a um, bit of a strange bike, but it's a nice bike, plenty of torque, nice Ducati, V-twin thump, really good bike, handles very well, um, with it coming from Ducati as well, you, you know it's going to handle, So, but an all round good bike, plenty of power, plenty of torque, a little underrated against something that's going to compete with like the Bulldog, but good bike all round. Ducati Monster, I've never rolled them, I've seen him and I sat on one. Um, that same, I don't like them single swing arms, they put me off a bit. Especially when you're going on a left hand bend, they don't like them at all. Ducati Monster the, um, 620. It is the base model for the Ducati Monsters coming in. Uh, fantastic machine, brilliant sounding, uh, good budget V-twin. Ducati Monster, um, good bike, um, not always reliable as they uh, should have been necessarily. Um, love my V-twin, so very, very good spread of power plenty of talk, uh, a typical Ducati really. Welcome back to the GSXR 1000 here at Donington Park. Now then, when it was launched, this bike set new standards by giving us more control and finesse to a bike with this much power than we had ever had before. 
you can chuck this thing around as if it were a 750, flicking it from side to side and getting it right over until the pegs are gently scuffing the floor and the grin inside your lid is a mile wide. All the while you can get on in confidence because the suspension, as ever from Suzuki, is quality as standard. Something else that's part of the GS6R experience is that chassis because oh boy is it good. Come corner exit time and you better know what you're up to because for any corner you care to mention, you can guarantee that this bike has got more power available than you actually need to get out of that turn as fast as possible. The only slight niggle is the forks, which will ultimately lock out under very hard braking at the track. They don't bottom out, but there comes a point where they just don't compress any further and you can't dial it out. It's never alarming and the bike stays perfectly composed. It just lets you know that that's it as far as the forks are going on the anchors. And so we come to the brakes the fabled Achilles heel of this monster of all motorcycles. And I'll be honest with you, they are indeed average. They're not bad, they're not terrible, they're just not brilliant. And unfortunately in this class, every other bike, even the aging and venerable ZX9, will outbreak the GSX-R, despite those oh-so-trick six-pot calipers. With six pistons in each caliper, they really shouldn't be down on power, but they are. The GSX-R can still be stopped hard at the track, it's just you'll have to work harder than you do on any of the competition. Strange thing is that the back brake is an absolute peach. And now it's time for the brake! Welcome back to part two! And now it's back to Donington with the GSX-R1000. So if the brakes were better, would this be the perfect super sports bike? Well, perhaps. I say perhaps because this really is a beast of a bike that for some may prove to be too much too often. You only had to see in the months after this bike's release the smatterings of GSX R1000s that turned up in the classifieds for sale as owners suddenly realised they'd actually bitten off more than they could chew. Then there's the other side of this coin where you find that even if you can handle all the GSX R has to offer, there's nowhere in the confines of our little island you can really use the thing properly and be guaranteed of hanging on to your licence. If it's one of these you're after, you'd better be prepared to invest in a stack of track days and foreign trips if you want to get the very best out of it. And now it's over to Rod. OK, you have sports bikes, tourers, sports tourers, retros, big trailies, classics, cruisers and customs. All the key manufacturers have something in the catalogue to satisfy your taste, whatever that may be. And all the bases are covered. And then Harley Davidson stroll into town and move the goalposts. If you've been living on Mars for the past year, you may not have encountered the Harley-Davidson V-Rod, the bike that was launched in a blaze of publicity that's turned the market on its head. For with the V-Rod, Harley-Davidson have invented a completely new category of bike and have at once catapulted themselves to the very forefront of cutting-edge performance. Harley call this bike a hot rod, and let's get one thing quite clear. While it may still be a V-twin, it bears very little relation to any previous Milwaukee product other than the name on the tank. The 1130cc engine is an entirely new, state-of-the-art unit with development work by Porsche. And the story doesn't end there. The stylists were let loose with their pencils to craft something so modern looking, it might have just been transported back in time from the 25th century. Harley have got the timing just right with this bike, as more and more sports bike riders, discouraged by the rash of gatsos afflicting our roads, look for alternate ways of enjoying a life on two wheels. 
Many who would have dipped a toe into the cruiser market will enjoy the V-Rod with its unique combination of street style and high performance. You can go slowly on this bike and enjoy the ride. Then when roads permit, you can open the throttle and enjoy a rush of power that will whip you up to a claim maximum of 140 miles an hour. Pardon the cliché, but this bike truly is awesome. For performance, 9 out of 10. The bike is sweet and easy to ride in town, but open the throttle and it surges forward with a will. That radical looking steering geometry works a lot better than you might expect, but the bike is long and will run a little wide in tight turns until you get used to it. High speed handling is solid, the steering is light and the brakes are excellent. Comfort, 8. Some may find the low slung feet forward riding position puts a lot of weight on their backside, particularly if migrating from a sports bike. Value for money, 9 out of 10. At over 14 grand, the Harley is never going to be a cheap option. But for your money, you get an exclusivity that simply isn't available elsewhere. There's currently a waiting list for these bikes, so if you want one in a hurry, be prepared to pay over the list price. The V-Rod really is in a class of its own, and the bike's cult status is likely to keep second-hand prices high. Build quality, 9 out of 10. The V-Rod is difficult to fault on quality and it's beautifully finished from its radical engineering down to its tasty detailing. For street cred, 10 out of 10. Everyone, everywhere is impressed by this bike. Traditional dyed in the wool Harley riders respect it from a distance, while Fireblade and R1 owners cluster around wherever you park to get a glimpse of the future. Right here, right now, Harley's Hot Rod is the coolest bike on the street. Harley V-Rod, the nicest Harley that they've ever produced, plus with the, this year it's been the new uh, water-cooled engine, very, very quick, can surprise a lot of the big sports bikes. You get them at a set of traffic lights, head to head, you've got to go for the V-Rod. Low down, uh, central gravity very low, pulls very, very cleanly, big power plant, nice big torque curve. Um, handling wise, it's a little bit low, you're going to grind the pegs out quite soon on some twisties, but anywhere else, very comfortable machine, nice easy to ride, and it's a Harley. Well, I've heard it's pretty quick for a big bike, but apart from that, I'm not sure. And now we're back on track with Suzuki's finest. Performance, it's a 9 out of 10. That motor is simply stunning. And then there's the chassis it's all wrapped up in, which is still sharp enough to cut yourself. If only those brakes were better, we could be talking a perfect 10. Comfort, six out of 10. It's not really this bike's strong point. However, at least it is quite a roomy riding position and the seat is fairly well padded. Build quality, it's a seven out of 10 here. It's not bad, but there are a couple of points letting the GSXR down. Things like the wheel paint, that's a little on the thin side, and then this very trick titanium nitride coating on the forks, which does tend to start wearing off after a year or so. Value for money, it's a seven out of 10 here because there is no doubt you get an awful lot of motorcycle for your money with the GSXR and the price is competitive with the rest of the class. Just don't forget those potentially enormous insurance premiums that go with running a bike like this. 
Street cred, eight out of 10 for this bike. There is no doubt it is the bad boy tool of the moment, and you are guaranteed big respect just turning up anywhere on one of these. However, it does look a little too much like it's 600 and 750 stable mates at a glance, so we're gonna knock a few points off for that. Suzuki GSX-R1000, absolute phenomenal performance out of the machine. Fantastic handling bike. Not a lot of difference weight-wise between that and its uh, brothers 750 and the GSX-R600, superb. Nice bike, very light. Uh, rate it as one of the best bikes out at the moment. Uh, no fault brakes are good, all round bike. I'd say it's a really nice bike, worth buying. Uh, and it is a really nice bike, size don't matter because it is light. Uh, realistically, yeah, it's a nice bike. I've got the GSX-R1000, I've, I've had it for two weeks now and it's been fantastic. Very, very powerful and uh, very good handling as well. Good brakes and everything. Power everywhere, any gear, any speed. It's power just there. Fantastic, that's the word. Yeah, the GSX-R, uh, I've not been on the Thal, I've been on the 600, I like that bike. It uh, holds the roads, especially on bends. The Thousand, I think it's a bit too fast for me, that one. That's it from us at Bike File this week, but join us next week when we'll have some more monumental metal for you to marvel at. And if you love, or hate in fact, any of the bikes we've featured in the series, then let us know by voting for them on our website.